Hello. Today we will discuss a problem on how to compute the intersection of two sorted arrays. First, let's look at the problem. We have two arrays, A and B, which are already sorted in ascending order. The purpose of this problem is to return a new array, which only contains the elements that are present in both arrays A and B. We need to be careful since the input arrays may have duplicate elements, while the returned array should be duplicate free. For example, we have two arrays A and B here. For these two arrays, we should return a new array with only the common elements in both arrays of 5, 6, and 8. Let me introduce one of the industrial use cases of this algorithm. A natural implementation for a search engine is to retrieve the most relevant documents that match the set of words in a search query. That is usually done by maintaining a so-called inverted index. For example, if we search Donald Trump in Google, we will have a list of pages come out. Like here we can see Wikipedia page, some news related to him, his Facebook page, etc. The ranking of these pages will depend on the inverted index of the search query. In the search engine system, every page has a unique identifier, page ID. An inverted index is a map that takes a word and returns a sorted array of page IDs which contain the word. The sorted order could be the page rank in descending order. For a single word or phrase, we know how it works in a search engine. How about a sentence, say, a search query containing multiple words? A sentence is a list of words. Since we already have the inverted indices for the individual words, the search engine will first find the sorted array for each word and then computes the intersection of these arrays. The intersection are the pages that contains all the words in the query. Among all the processes, finding the intersection of the inverted indices of all the individual words is the most computationally intensive step. A good algorithm may significantly reduce the computational time. This problem is a typical use case for the intersection of sorted arrays in a search engine. I hope this provides some context as to why this problem is important. Now we can easily come up with a brute force method. In this algorithm, we iterate through all the elements in the first array, A. For each element in A, we check if it is also present in the other array, B. If it is, then the element is present in both arrays and we should put it into the intersection array. By iterating all the elements and comparing, we will form the intersection array. The time complexity of this algorithm is big O of m times n, where m is the length of array A and n is the length of array B. The code for the brute force method is shown on this slide. Hello, 大家好，我是 B Tiger 的 Joy。如果你喜欢我们的内容，不要忘了点 like， 还要记得点 share， 分享给更多小伙伴哦。更重要的是。不要忘了点击右下角的 subscribe， 订阅我们的频道，每天都有精彩内容不断更新哦。In the first solution, for one element in array A, we need to check if it is present in array B by traversing the whole array, which has a time complexity of big O of n. Given the fact that array B is sorted, can we do better here? One improvement we can think of is to use binary search in this step. Since we know binary search is a much better algorithm to locate one element in a sorted array, this is the code for the solution. The only difference here is we use the binary search method to check if the element is also present in the array B. In this solution, the time complexity will be reduced to big O of m times the log of n, where m is the length of array A, which the outer loop is running, and n. Is the length of array B, which we use to check if the element is present. Another improvement we can make is to compare the lengths of the two arrays in the beginning, 
and choose the shorter array for the outer loop. If n is much smaller than m, we know n log m is much smaller than m log n. This is actually the best solution for this use case where the length of one array is much smaller than the other. It is even much better than the linear algorithm that we will be discussing later. Now we will introduce another solution which has a linear time complexity. We call this method a two-pointer method. We use two index variables, i and j, which are both initialized as zero in the beginning. For example, in this problem, i and j are both equal to zero. The two pointers are pointing to the first elements of the two arrays. We compare the values of the elements that the two pointers are at, a of i and b of j. Now a of 0 is equal to 2, and b of 0 is equal to 5. 2 is smaller than 5, so we increment i to 1. Now i is equal to 1, and j is equal to 0. a of i is equal to 3, and b of i is equal to 5. Since 3 is smaller than 5, we need to increment i to 2. Now i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 0. a of 2 is equal to 3 and b of 0 is equal to 5. 3 is smaller than 5, so we need to increment i to 3. Now i is equal to 3 and j is still equal to 0. a of 3 is equal to 5 and b of 0 is equal to 5. 5 equals 5, so 5 is one element that is contained in both arrays. We add this element to the intersection array, then we increment both i and j. Now i is equal to 4, and j is equal to 1. a of 4 is equal to 5, and b of 1 is equal to 5. Since 5 is equal to 5, should 5 be another intersection element? Not really, because duplicate elements are not allowed in the intersection array. We need to exclude it. We then increment j to 2. Now i is equal to 4, and j is equal to 2. a of 4 is equal to 5, and b of 2 is equal to 6. Since 5 is smaller than 6, we increment i to 5. So, if we keep doing this while we iterate through the rest of the elements in the array, the intersection array will be formed. This is the code for the solution. Please pay co close attention to line number 5, where we take care of the duplicate elements in the intersection array. You can pause the video to take a closer look at it. Please remember, the best solution of this problem depends on the problem definition. If the two input arrays are about the same length, the linear algorithm is the best. While if the length of one array is much smaller than the other, the binary search method is actually the best. Thanks for watching.